Hi, I'm Bobby Chu, and I also have on here my co-host, the amazing, the incredible Chaos Adera. We're both Emmy-winning creators slash artists that work in film. Welcome to our 90 Mac Life Drawing class. This is a free class every Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We do 90 minutes of life drawing together here on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button so you get an email notification whenever there's a new class or video. How this works is pretty simple. We do four one minute poses, four two minute poses, four five minute poses, and then five 10 minute poses, and that's it. That's the 90 minute art challenge. Each week is a different topic. When you're done the session, post your sketches on social media and hashtag it 90 min art challenge so everyone can see your sketches. We'll do the same. Also, if I may recommend something for all the artists out there looking to really level up quickly, I highly recommend schoolism.com. I teach on there as well as many of the top artists in the industry. So when you subscribe to Schoolism, you get access to the entire library of courses, over 50 courses in total, as well as access to exclusive live webinars every week. Just sign up at schoolism.com. The 90 Mac Life Drawing class is also brought to you by Lightbox Expo. It's the ultimate event to network and meet the artists and creatives behind your favorite movies, TV shows, animations, illustrations, and games. We expect over 10,000 artists attending this year and hundreds of guests and speakers. This is happening October 14th to 16th, 2022 in Pasadena, California. Lightbox Expo also has a Discord where artists meet to do the 90 Mac life drawing classes together, as well as other fun activities and events. All right, now on to today's life drawing session. Okay, hey everybody, and welcome to another 90 Mac uh, what do we call this? Sketch group or Drawing something? Session. Anyways, let's hop right into it. We're doing bears today. Okay, so let's go with the very first one. First one is these are one minute poses. Let's go. Before the stream, we we're talking a little bit about um, air trivia with Neld and Patricia that are online currently, and we we're talking about polar bears, aren't we? Amongst them, yeah. You want me to? Oh, uh... mystery question all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Cell, yeah. So now that Patricia, they have some polar bear trivia as we draw polar bears. I thought it'd be fun to learn a bit more about polar bears. Yeah, I think a good question to start with is, what's the color of their skin? Oh, type it in the chat. Next one minute pose coming up. to see if anyone knows because I, I didn't expect this answer. It'd be amazing if it was like rainbow colored. <laughs> pink. Full on pink. Mm Thank you. 
probably there's some weird audio disruption on the stream. Okay. Oh. Yeah, uh, you can hear it right away if you check it. Sorry about that. Let me uh, double check here. So that's good too, the sound currently. We're trying to figure out the sound right now. Oh, then maybe that's my microphone. What does it sound like? It's just like a buzzing sound? Weird sounds. You hear it like through everything. Oh, maybe it's, it's, it's static. It's a weird, weird, squeaky static. That's what oh, it is. So sorry, everyone. Um, In the meantime, beautiful bears, Kay. Oh, thanks, Patricia. <laughs> I hope it gets fixed. that one shoot okay. next two minutes these are two minutes now majestic for real i love the shape of this guy what a nice Yeah, since we're circling back to the polar bear, um, it is black, and most people guessed it. But the thing that's most interesting, that's something you already knew, Bobby, right? About this, the, the fur they have? Right. Yeah, the fur is hollow, see through, or something. It reflects um, a lot of the light. Yeah, actually. Yeah, the, the color of the, the fur isn't white, it's hollow, like like you said, and it reflects white light. That's why it looks white. So it's quite interesting, I didn't know that. What an amazing creature. By the way, guys, it's, uh, the sound thing is still happening. Oh. Uh, it, it was gone for one second when Bobby banged his uh, mic. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it sounds like a VCR tape getting rewound, some, somebody said. It, it looks a little That's bit. That's a like... pretty good description. Yeah. yeah. Must be nice. Maybe I'll try moving the. The maybe microphone. It's this fan. Yeah, maybe it is the fan. Could it be a fan set? Oops. Could it be a blow the wind blowing into the mic, maybe. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that <laughs> makes sense. Okay. All right. Maybe hopefully this fixes it.
full. It's gone now. It's gone. Yes. Oh, it was the fan. Jeez, sorry. <laughs> we got that. We got that. <laughs> There's always something every week. There's always something. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, look at this little paw of this guy. Well, not really a little paw, but still. <laughs> oh, I have a bear story. Um, my old uh, life drawing instructor when I was in college told us this story because he went to spend some time with the with the Inuits in um, Nunavut, I think. And that's like Inuit country up north. And so um, the people that he was staying with were like, okay, well, if you're gonna go out with us, you need to know how to protect yourself from in case you uh, meet up with a polar bear. And I was like, okay, and gave him this little knife. And he was like, what you wanna do is you wanna if you see a polar bear coming after you, what you want to do is you want to watch it uh, as it's chasing you down pretty much. You want to sit there and you want to watch it or whatever. Maybe not sit, but... Um, and see if you can tell if it's left-handed or right-handed. <laughs> <laughs> because when it um, attacks you, when it gets to you and attacks you, it will lift up and it will take its you know, dominant hand and slash you in half <laughs> and so if you if you know which if it's a left-handed or right-handed polar bear then you know which way to um duck or like sidestep or whatever out of the way so that hopefully you can survive and you can block their swing <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty much wow that's the tip huh <laughs> That's Good luck tip. with that. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. But yeah, I can't imagine if you if you like really study them that you can find out stuff like that where just by observing them, by knowing the difference, then it can actually help you. Yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I have a one, one fun more trivia question. This might be a bit of an obvious one, but which bear species is the largest one? Polar bear. Or, I don't know. That'd be my guess. Grizzly? <laughs> oh, grizzly bear uh, or polar bear? I, I still think... Yeah. Still kind of think mm. polar bear. Let's see what a chat thinks. Koala bear? <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny if it was cloud. Gore-Tax. Werner told us that, yeah, that was, that was uh, my life drawing teacher, Werner Zimmerman. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if the Inuits were just messing with him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Spent way too much time just doing almost nothing. Part of the lesson. Yep. The Next lesson. one will be different. That's for sure. I'm quite impressed by the bear knowledge. Like it was the polar bear, by the way, the biggest one. Oh. It was found in the found in the 19th century, but um, the the Kodiak bear was actually the second largest. It was very close. Someone guessed that as well. Oh wow! All right. Jeez. Look at this guy. This guy's huge. Uh -huh. It's cute. Oh, 
by the way, the largest bear ever found was 2,200 pounds. So that's... 2,200 pounds. Wow, two tons. Somehow that reminds me of the Game of Thrones zombie polar bears. <laughs> They're coming at you. <laughs> Mouth is pretty happy. Yeah. I don't know if you got to the mouth yet. It's so cute. For a giant killing machine. Yeah, that's a funny thing, right? It's such a big creature, but it has such a cute face sometimes. It's pretty. It's so huggable. <laughs> I think it's because it's a, it's probably just nature responding, right? Because they know now that we're watching which side they, 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 they're about to lunch. They're distracting you with their cute face. I have a somewhat. <laughs> um, I, like that. I have some more bear trivia. Who coined the term teddy, teddy bear? bear? Oh. Okay, you already know that one. <laughs> Wow, your drawing looks so awesome there, Kate. What? I really like that one. Oh, thanks. Yours too. These are five minute poses now, everybody. And the person that coined the the phrase teddy bear, or at least it came from him, was uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of makes sense <laughs> now that you heard the name. Teddy bear, yeah. Oh, a few people guessed it in the chat. We got a smart group of people, that's for sure. They're just all bear experts, basically. <laughs> <laughs> they, they know it all about. <laughs> I have another trivia one. The brown bear is the national animal of what country? Oh. That's a great question. Wonder if anybody gets it. We have such a global audience, so maybe. I like that the national animal was it of Scotland? Was a a, a unicorn. unicorn. A unicorn. A unicorn, yeah. Which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. they're real. <laughs> yeah, at the time they believed they were real. That was the funny thing. And uh, apparently, like historically, they were being duped by fishermen who took, like, the, was it the teeth or horn of certain uh, sea animals? And they were just very similar to what people imagined unicorn horns to. And they sold them for a lot of money. <laughs> oh, wow. But it's cool to have such like a mythological, mythological creature and like your national animal. Yeah. The country is not guessed yet, but oh, should dang. I spoil it? Uh, you. It it was Whatever Finland. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Finnish, from Finnish mythology. That's a great bit of trivia. There. Well, apparently it's also for Russian. It says in the answer, Trish, Trish, oh. it's for both. Oh. So some people did actually guess it. Impressive. It was a trick question. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Mm 
Um, so what do you call a group of bears? That's actually a pretty good question. Couldn't be heard. Because that's, wait, it doesn't sound right. Yeah, that one I definitely do not know. Another great question. Look at that group of bears. Look at that school <laughs> of bears. No. <laughs> Look at that herd of. I wonder from the people like what would be your favorite um like a uh, bear from movies of course you have uh Paddington, Paddington. and yeah. what more <laughs> I'm, I'm nostalgic for Winnie the Pooh just because I grew Winnie up the Pooh of course oh, yeah. I like Paddington Baloo so many oh yeah of course that's Jungle Book story right I think mine would be Care Bears because they just want to be good. <laughs> they just want to spread good. the love. All right, shoot. Um, where am I? Oh my gosh. This is okay. There we go. Next one. Boom. <laughs> this guy's great, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. By the way, to return to the question, and no one guessed it. This is the only question no one got. It's a sloth. It's called a sloth of bears. Oh, wow. Like the, like the creature, a sloth? It's, it's written the same, I think, yeah. Oh, but wow. it's, it's, uh, that's apparently how it's called. Wow. And even though, because it, it's not like they, they live or hunt together as groups, but they still spend time together sometimes. Oh. Look at that sloth of bears over there. Catching all those fish. Yeah. That's so so the question then becomes what do you do when you meet a bear? What do you mean do when you meet the sloth of bears? Uh -huh. <laughs> you hope he's full. <laughs> you hope they, they, they all have the same preferred side, right? To lunch. <laughs> 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 I would be in chase. I would never say, oh, there's a sloth of bears. Is <laughs> <laughs> that something me. that. <laughs> there's a sloth of bears, everybody run. I'm being chased by a sloth, but they think, like, oh, it's just a sloth. <laughs> Oh, by the way, next week, it's, I already uh, put up a thing for next week's uh, sketch group subject, and it's going to be film studies from Roger Deakins films. So mm -hmm. the award-winning cinematographer, legendary cinematographer, um, and we're going to be studying still shots from his films. So definitely join us again next week, every week. 
as we tackle different subjects. I saw you was a cinematographer from Blade Runner as well, the last one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Blade Runner 2049. Yeah. Yeah, that so was good. So I have a good trivia question. How did the sun bear get its name? Oh. Uh, shoot. Like, instinctively, I want to say because of the pattern on its chest for some reason, but that feels like more like a moon than a sun, to be honest. So. But that's the only guess I got. Is it different from the moon bear? I... Is there a moon bear? Yeah. Is there a moon bear? There's um, a moon bear. So the sun bear is the one with the uh, little crest on its head. The white thing on its head. <laughs> I just thought it was a moon bear. <laughs> it should be called a moon bear. I, maybe it is not. You know what? I don't know. Yeah, it's the one, like you said, Bobby. It's like where it has this gold. Uh, pattern on his chest and that's just just also the reason it's because it's, rep it's supposed to represent the rising sun oh. well, there you go it should be called the moon bear <laughs> we'll just change the name right now it's fine There's a question on Slido uh, from Anonymous. Have any of you ran into a bear into the <laughs> into the wild? Did you have a bear encounter, Bobby or Kate? Not yet. No, I've never seen a bear. Not good, but not yet. Okay. I've had encounters with teddy bears a lot of time as a kid. Oh, oh teddy bears. <laughs> Those bears, yes. Okay, next five minute pose. Oh. I do hear that you have different ways of behaving when you encounter a bear, like if it's a brown bear, black bear. Right. You're supposed it's to do like, okay. there's one you're supposed to pretend you're dead, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's with a grizzly brown bear. Mm. Oh, yeah, actually, I did see a bear close, like in the, like, just walking by because. Um, oh, my God. It was one of my close friends' wedding, and she had it way up north. And all the ladies, we were all in a salon, and it's one of those really small town up north. And then uh, a brown bear just, you know, casually was like walking outside. And we're, we're, <laughs> we had to wait a while for it to, uh, you to know, go disappear, away. to go Jeez. away. And so, so, yeah. So we could get into our cars and go to the venue. But everyone was calm. It was like a normal thing to them. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's just Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Barry's looking for lunch. And meanwhile, I was looking up. Apparently, with black bears, is uh, you not you should not play that, and then you should run. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you should run. Like, oh, yeah. easy meal. It's, it's, it's just laying there, Pa. Mm There's another Slido question from Anonymous. Do you have any advice on how to become, uh, on, on how to have patience or become? Oh. Yeah, how do we have patience? Thank you. How to have patience. Take deep breaths a lot. Yeah, try to distract <laughs> Take yourself. Take deep breaths. Yeah. <laughs> try to distract yourself with other thoughts. Yeah. Right, we've all imagine you're that. in front of a bear. Imagine you're in front of a bear and you, you're supposed to not move. <laughs> or, or 
break down steps so that, you know, when you achieve a certain step, it feels, you know, like motivating. More. Like you've done more. You've done more. You, you're done. You're one step closer. Mm. Yeah, I just try to, you know, first, oh, here's a good one, because this is what I do when I, when I go running. I just pretend I got no choice. Once you have no choice, then things get a lot simpler, you know? Like, a lot of, like, when I don't have as much patience, it's because I'm thinking about the other choices that I have that I could do. Yeah. Right? That's pretty universal for all of us, I think. So nowadays, I just go, okay, yeah, this thing, I don't have a choice. I could cry about it all I want, but I'm... I. I'm stuck here. I have to keep running. I'm going to keep running or I'm going to fall over, but I can't get off this treadmill either way. <laughs> but also I try to, you know, with everything, just try to find that little slice of whatever aspect of whatever it is that you're doing that you actually like. Right? There has to be something. You might have to go all the way back to when you're a tiny little kid drawing on the floor of your uh, living room or whatever. But either way, we do have those kind of memories. It also depends, right, on what the thing is that makes you impatient. What is the thing that makes you restless? Oh, and like, get rid of it. Well, at least do something to, to counter it out or something. Mm. I'm sure different people have different reasons for being impatient in certain situations. Like driving. That's one that I am trying to get better and better at. You know, just be okay with everything, with that person <laughs> in front of thing. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it just, it gets so habitual. You know, you're just like, if somebody should go and they're not going, instantly, you know, the, it's like a reflex to just get upset. For you? Uh, yeah, for me. <laughs> to get annoyed or something, and that's, you know, that's not what I want to do. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because if I, have to, yeah, if I have to drive long distance, I have the same thing where I start to get in, like impatient with, like, am I there yet? And then I get annoyed with other people as well. Yeah. So I just put on some music or just make it more relaxed. Just then chill. it works much better. And yeah, exactly. Ride. Like, thank goodness we even have cars. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to think about those kind of things. Imagine I had a horse. I wouldn't be that good on a horse. I'd probably fall off. Horses are fun, though. <laughs> True. Okay, fine. Not a, like a really old blind horse. <laughs> Glad I'm not a horse. We have another question on Slido. Um, I love these videos, life drawing recommendation. Uh, oh, they have a life drawing recommendation. Pirates oh, nice. of the Caribbean. Hey. Maybe like, <laughs> like the, the pirates. Yeah, that sounds cool. And they ask if we change the stream schedule. I don't think so, right? No, Did no, it's, it's always been Wednesdays. Uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, 6 o'clock in France. It might shift if you're if you're in a country that doesn't have like the summer clock change. Like it oh, might have shifted that. Yeah. 
one part of the world goes into the future. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the Amazing. <laughs> Aren't they getting rid of it? Uh, That's what I keep hearing, and then nothing happens. <clears throat> is this well, the sun bear? This is the sun bear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My bear knowledge is uh, showing up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's all because of this stream, Ninety Meg. <laughs> well, you know, it could get confusing with uh, this giant sloth of bears. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Never seen such a sloth of bears in my, in my life. <laughs> I'm gonna just try to keep using it whenever I can now. <laughs> Next dinner party, I'm gonna work it in somehow, Kate, over and over again until you're super embarrassed. <laughs> just kidding. I'll probably get more embarrassed before you do. Uh, I'll be like, okay. <laughs> Y'all are acting like a sloth of bears right now. <laughs> Come on, now. <laughs> what is that describing, though? That's the question. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what are they doing? Are they sleeping? Y'all. <laughs> Hibernation. <laughs> That was the best uh, new fact today for me. Sloth of bears. Well, to build on the sun bear, how long is the sun bear's tongue, do you think? Ooh, jeez. I'm assuming it's extremely long. Oh, yeah, I remember seeing pictures. So I'll guess, I will guess a foot and a half. <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> Any guesses, Kate? You guess a foot and a half? Hmm. Yeah. Guess a foot. <laughs> I don't know. What is it now? Let's give the chat a second to try to oh, respond. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. What do you guys think? 10 Turn minute poses now. A nice, very doable one for our first 10 minute pose. You see what I did there? Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> for all the peeps out there, this is, this is for you guys. Everybody's struggling with me, struggling with us each day, each week. You say a uh, foot long tongue, right, Kate? <laughs> <laughs> Is that your final answer? <laughs> sure, whatever. Shall we lock in the answer? <laughs> that's actually eight to nine inches. Oh. So that's less than a foot. Oh, okay. But, uh, but it's quite long for light beers in general. And they use it to extract termites, beetles, and eat certain, certain types of fruit. So it's... Oh, cool. To get to the honey, of course. <laughs> they of all course. try to get to the honey. <laughs> Talking about bear snacks, uh, which insect is the favorite of the grizzly bear as a mm. snack? Maybe somebody knows. I have a guess, but I'll let people guess a bit first. 
But my guess, I have no idea if it's true or not. Yeah, so I guess termites. It's gonna be my guess. Good guess. Right? It feels like it belongs. It is something unexpected. Oh. A little unexpected. Oh, okay. Shoot, yeah. now you're making me second guess myself. I I, I didn't mean termites. Yeah. What I meant. <laughs> I meant were termites were just a stepping stone to my real answer. Like I will, I will bee larva. <laughs> it, it, it flies. Oh, that and it is an insect. Oh, okay. I was gonna say bee larva. But by your reaction, I feel like I'm. I I I didn't mean bee larva. What I meant was. <laughs> what you mean, Bobby? I don't know. It's... Bobby's eager to win all these bad things. <laughs> That's good. What could it? Be? Oh, Savvy calls butterflies. Maybe Savvy. Maybe. Yeah, that'd be fun. I now want to see you do, you do like a, a trivia show on TV, Bobby, where you're like, this is the answer. Well, wait. <laughs> well, <laughs> I changed my answer. And then look at the, like, the presenter. Well, <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> well, yeah, and then just like try stuff on. If I was going to answer, I might answer butterflies and then stare at them but <laughs> what my real possible answer would be is baby bees <laughs> i don't know uh, I'll, I'll spoil it uh, although grizzly enjoy eating many insects moths are on top of their menu oh. and the researchers have observed that they climb a really high mountains to order to feast on them and Not. they will turn over rocks and spend up 14 hours in excess of every devouring day. Yeah. 40 thousand moths 14 hours a day they spend yeah. 14 hours a day looking for moths wow it's, they love moths <laughs> stay clear of moths <laughs> wow that's a that's another good one well, it's good to in, uh, input in a painting, maybe. You know, you have this lovely bear and some moths here and there. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. That's a great one. Moths. Yeah, Savvy so uh, was the most closest one. Good point with the butterflies. I love how you made the fur look okay. It looks amazing. Oh, thanks. So. Experiments. Yeah, I noticed that too. I was like, what's she doing there? It's cool. Mm -hmm. Love seeing experiments. So I have an interesting one. So koalas aren't technically bears, but who were the ones who dubbed them koala bears? Oh. Do you mean like people or? Yeah, which people from which um, continent or region of the world dubbed koalas uh, koala bears? Let's see, what does the word koala sound like? Which language? Hey, koala. <laughs> I will give you one hint. It's not the locals. It was like people that came to the country. Right. That... 
I want to say Britain because it's Australia. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go with Britain. Survey says. <laughs> I'm still waiting for chat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think you have to think more along the lines of like continents. Which continent? Oh. Which continent came the people that that dubbed koalas koala bears? Oh, oh. Man, I used to know this. Okay, then I guess not. I guess Europe. I'm gonna go with Europe. If that was my final answer. <laughs> but actually, Koala, North America, mm. yeah, I, I'm going to go with North America if we're going by continents. You're changing your answer? I never did. I was just hypothesizing <laughs> if I did answer. <laughs> so the right answer was your original answer, Europeans. <laughs> Dang it. You tricked me. <laughs> you tricked me. <laughs> So apparently when Europeans came to Australia for the first time, they believed that koalas were bears. So they just oh. started calling them koala bears. Oh. And that's how it stuck. But they are marsupials instead. So you'd be a good uh, game show host because you make me question and get the wrong answer. <laughs> Talking about game shows, we watched this show the other day. I think it was on Netflix. It was a bit strange. It was how good you are with like, if if you lie about You're supposed the answer, to bullshit. Or... Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's very similar to Weekend Millionaires, but then it's like you can lie, and the and there's other contestants that if you, they catch you in the lie, right. then you're done. But if they don't, if you, they believe your made up answer, then you still go through even though you're wrong. I That's actually, really fun I saw that one. Yeah. You saw that one? <laughs> is, it, is it good? It to, it's okay. It's, awesome. it it's was... really funny. It's really funny. Like, I wouldn't say it's really good, but it's really funny to watch. It was just something different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching a similar show like that. Um, it's starring uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Who's telling the truth? It's so hard to... Figure out. Sorry, that was a dumb joke. <laughs> well, what I learned from the from the quiz is that it doesn't matter who tells the truth. <laughs> that's, the, that's what you take away from the quiz. Oh, he's bathing. All right, isn't this one nice? Hmm. Do you want a color behind mine? Uh, I already started over here. Okay. Unless you want to move over here. No, it's cool. message thing on Oh, did I press that back? No. Oops. I did. Oh. It's a bit weird.
Is there any more bear facts? I'm looking for an interesting one. <laughs> I saw one that was more like a bit like who, who owns the most panda bears, bears in the world. And then it came down to the Chinese government, which is like a weird fact to be honest. Yeah, they yeah. use it as bargain chips. Yeah. Well, you know that all the other pandas in all these zoos around the world, they lease the bears. Yeah. They yeah. lease those panda bears. It's not theirs, right? Yeah, I, I read that. That's crazy. Also, if a panda bear in your zoo has a baby panda bear, then you gotta pay the the Chinese government, <laughs> even yeah, if it yeah. if it even if it gave birth in your zoo. Yeah, and it's into the millions, right? That's what I'm hearing. Reading is like I don't it's know, crazy. I don't know, but um, I did a we did a schoolism workshop in Chengdu, China, one time, and I only went because they told me I could hold a baby panda bear. I had no interest in going to Chindu, China. And I remember then, this story from yeah. early back, like a while back. And then uh, they're like, "Oh, but you know, you can hold a baby panda bear in our in the, uh, <laughs> panda bear, whatever sanctuary." And then I was like, "Oh my god, can the instructors do that too?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure, of course." And so I told uh, Louis Del Carmen, and I was like, "You want to go hold baby panda bears in China?" He's like, "Hell yeah." And then disappointment. But we got to see them, which was really cool. It's not the same though. I wanted to hold one and stick my uh, face in its fur. It's not as easy. <laughs> and just mm -hmm. smush it all around. I remember that you said a lot on the 90 meg from the panda bears and uh, when you looked up 90 meg you had uh, a couple of people drawing bobby with a panda bear like <laughs> oh, oh my god that's so there, which was kind of sweet yeah that's awesome I, I even remember that like you participated in a school as a webinar after the show where someone in chat what? said like just give bobby a panda bear let's promise him a panda bear and he's happy <laughs> Um, Someone remember and now that come to their city. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you definitely can bribe Bobby with animals. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they're, you know, in a sanctuary or rehabilitation center. Exactly. Right, of course. No petting zoos. No petting zoos. I have a uh, one. Um, what is a female bear called? And a male bear? Huh. Mm. Wow, that's a tough one. I'll let the audience go for that one. I like that one of the option is queen, but that's not it. <laughs> queen. Well, I can give a hint, which is I grew up on a, like my, my, my parents are farmers, on a pig farm, and it's the same names as with pigs. Oh. Oh. Mad okay. and sir. Madam and sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sir Pig, let's, let's go. Monsieur Pig. Monsieur Pierre. <laughs> and Madame Pig. That makes sense. Mr. Bear, Mrs. Bear. Like in the children's books. Final answer. Let's go. Nell, do you want to share the result? Uh, yeah, sure. I think the female one is a so, oh. and the male one is a boar. Oh! <laughs> it's like, oh, that's so obvious now that you see it. <laughs> Heard of all those things. Darn it. 
The group name still confuses me because there's also a species of bears, right? So if that's the name of a group of bears, that's sloth also a species. Bears? Yeah, I think that's a species. Right? Have you seen that sloth of sloth of bears? <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Even like Baloo from Jungle Book is a sloth bear, I believe. Uh, I love that character, Baloo. Um, Such a great character. Definitely. So how many species of bears are there worldwide? Oh. Uh, I will say 60. <laughs> this is just like that number out of 63. Yeah, it's pretty random. It's less. That's good. That's something I can promise you. It's oh. less than that. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. Seems like a lot less than that. 14. Now I'm just. Guessing. <laughs> you dropped a lot from 16 to 14. <laughs> I do feel like that presenter right now. I'm just looking at you like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, it's a lovely bear, Beth. Mm -hmm. I love what you're doing, Bobby. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it looks amazing. Wow. Yay. Tiny. Kind of this almost feels a bit like Baloo, like like the way he's flying in the water. I will I will hint for the number of species. It's even less than fourteen. Whoa. So the big drop was a good choice. Oh jeez. Um. Hmm. Okay, let's go. Next one here. That was a great one. Because we didn't have to draw the body. <laughs> here we go. Two little guys. as well so cute this just reminds me of growing up with brothers <laughs> <laughs> So they want to make one more guess for the number of species. Eight. Wow, that's exactly it. That was impressive. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So we're twenty around. Around. It's, it's, <laughs> All the way, came Good back guess. all the way from sixty-three to <laughs> guess exactly. <laughs> so it's Asian black bears, which is uh, apparently they're called moon bears as well. So okay, yes, there are moon bears. That's what oh. I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> and there's brown bears, so uh, giant pandas, <laughs> brown bears, giant pandas, uh, North American black bears, polar bears, sloth bears, and spectacle, spectacle bears, which are also known as Andean bears and sun bears. So those are all the species throughout the world. 
Yeah, you were so right. I can't believe it. Because <laughs> I had to draw it once for like a thing. Oh my god, I feel horrible. I feel like I just meant. But I, I totally <laughs> forgot that. Um, I'm so yeah, sorry. it's the Asians that like call it a moon bear. Like in Japan, it's a moon bear. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and they also have the similar thing as the sun bear, like uh, spot. Same crescent. Yeah, very similar. Yeah, but it's white or something, right? It's creamier. Yeah, and it's differently shaped as well, but it's, it's exactly the same spot. It's amazing creatures. I have another question. Yeah. Which bear hibernates during the winter? Uh, the green Which species, species, I would say. Which species of bears? It's got to be a got to be grizzlies. Grizzly bear. Or browns. Let's say it's got to be a grizzly bear. It's got to be grizzlies. I'm just going to go with whatever K says now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. Terrible with that shit. She should. Oh my she all the facts. She would. She would probably even embarrass me with my questions if it just not. That's not true. She would give us even more <laughs> trivia. Or she'll be like, "Well, actually, I coined the term sloth of bears." <laughs> or something like, like oh, "Oh my goodness, okay, what yeah. the." <laughs> For sure. That's really neat what you're doing there, Kay. It's, it's very experimental. Magma brushes. Magma brushes. I feel like I need to mention that um, Magma is the software that we're using, and it's free. So go check it out. Go use it and sketch with everybody. Sketch with your friends. But I use it on the live course Discord regularly, like for drawing jams and events. It's super helpful. Oh, awesome. But also, if you wanted to get Kay's very cool uh, brushes there, then you could also sign up for the um, subscription. So with the pro plan, you get a bunch of different options as well as uh, custom brushes.
<laughs> oh, also I want to mention something that we haven't announced this year and it's kind of fun to give everybody a little sneak peek about things um, if they stay this long for the 90 Mac and that is uh, we have a new class coming out two new classes one with uh, Nathan Faux and then the other is with um, Silve Mark oh that's so good and that's this month and there's a schoolism uh, sale happening right now where you can save up to over 30 percent so if you were ever curious about schoolism, uh, it's a really great time to get in on uh, a subscription. Because with a subscription, you get access to all the classes. Another Nathan Fox class that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. He has already so many, but it's so good. <laughs> It's almost like a, it's kind of like a curriculum, you know, but like how to kind of get into Nathan Fowkes' head, <laughs> take all of these courses. And his voice is magical. I do believe that. Isn't it? <laughs> and also you might as well take all the courses because they all come with the subscription. Thing, you know, Bobby, I think the uh, the thing is flipped again. Oh, it is. Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. It's a nice little challenge in the middle to, you know, <laughs> keep flip the challenges. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have uh, like an assignment like that in my digital painting class on schoolism where there's like an assignment where you have to s sketch the assignment and then you have to sketch it, you have to paint it um, the mirror image without flipping, right? Because when you do that, you tend to, um, you tend to think more from a creating kind of aspect than a copying kind of mood. So it's a really great way to actually develop better uh, creating kind of muscles. All right. That was tough, right? Two book, two little bears. Last one. Here we go. What's the last one? <laughs> oh, that is cute. That is a whole so bunch of bears. Yeah. A sloth of little bears. <laughs> a sloth of little bears. Look at that sloth. Oh my goodness. We had to circle back to the question. So it was sort of a trick question because apparently even that's a common misconception that bears don't hibernate at all. But there are a few bear species that go into a deep sleep, which is slightly similar. And that, that includes the grizzly bears, the brown bears, and the black bears. Okay. So I guess the guess was half right. That's what, how I was. <laughs> oh, I would judge it. <laughs> so that's saying that... There was no right answer. There was no right answer. <laughs> like no bears truly hibernate. Is that Ex what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Uh, they're just deep Bear sleepers. Just, yeah, that's yeah, one of the too. most common misconceptions about bears. Oh. Is that the Good one. Dang. Instead, they do something they call the sleep. It's called torpor. I didn't know about this, but apparently, like, so very deep sleep in the winter months. Oh, okay. There's a question on Discord uh, from Celeste. 
Are you guys ever scared of drawing something and how do you overcome it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, but you just, <laughs> I just kind of force myself into the fire and, you know, make, like, stream it and stuff. I'll, I'll just go full on the other direction, you know, just uh, really attack the the thing that I'm scared of until I'm, I get used to it. It's not for everybody. So the punch laziness in the face should also be punch fear in the face. That's what you're basically Yeah, as long as it's not logic telling you, no, don't do that. <laughs> not every fear. <laughs> yeah, some fear is like, it should be there. Yeah, it's you're legit sometimes. in a way that you desensitize that fear by practicing it or yeah. yeah yeah like people they don't they don't realize like uh i used to be scared of speaking you know that was it would get me nervous and case seen it before like the first couple of times i spoke is like sweat and I, I was not you know really doing too well <laughs> But then you just keep doing it. Um, just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And then after a while, it's like, oh, yeah, it's not that bad. This is fine. Yeah, I had the same. I had the same. And then I would try to become a teacher. But I, I, I think leaning into your fear can become something. It's like going to an amusement park, right? When you go on a roller coaster, it's similar. When mm -hmm. you, you're, you're basically leaning into the fear. And that's something really exciting as well. And that's why I started speaking and stuff was because I was teaching. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Spending way too much time on every individual. Role. I have a question for all of us. What was your favorite bear fact? <laughs> favorite bear fact today? I think the sloth thing, the sloth thing kind of stuck in my head. Um, I think the, the polar bear fur, that, that it isn't white, that it is something else, that's something really that I didn't expect at all. Mm, that's a good one. I like the snacks. I thought that was funny. Yeah, yeah that was so nice. dedicated nice. to find. <laughs> They're snacks. That's that's a cool fact. Definitely. Fourteen hours a day just looking for these tiny, tiny little moths that hold like such little nutritional value probably for a giant bear, right? When he could eat a big fish and then also get all this. Yeah. Nutrition. Well if you eat forty thousand of them, maybe then it then it does provide nutrition. <laughs> like it's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. Holy. Like you have to eat so many. Aaron Blaze would probably be another very good person to have on here, spitting some uh, bear facts. Oh, yeah. Right? He's always drawing bear. He would be the guy. And he directed Brother Bear. Did he? Yeah.
Brother Bear was a uh, Disney movie, by the way. It's, it's from a, you know, a little while ago, so I'm sure some of the people probably never even heard of it. Yeah, and Terrell Whitlatch actually worked on it, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> Some other bears I was thinking of is the, the from Brave. Like, you had these three little... Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot about those. Uh -huh. Mom. Those are cute. Yeah. Yeah, actually, Terrell worked on that, too. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Any animal-related things she's touched? Yeah, pretty much. Like when they need an expert. And That's if you don't cool. know, if anybody doesn't know who Tara Whitlatch is, um, yeah, she's a creature expert, animal expert, illustrator, like nobody's okay. business. Um, and she has courses on schoolism as well, at diving into animals and how to understand them better. And will Terrell be at Lightbox this year? She will, I believe. Yeah, I I will double check that. Um, is she on the site? We'll look it up. But you guys got to check out the site. If I, if the viewers, if you guys haven't checked out Lightbox Expo yet, you could check out the. Um, the speakers that are coming, the presenters and the artists that are coming, it's gigantic. You're going to think it's like a phone book or something. Or <laughs> actually, maybe some people haven't even seen phone books before. Um, just a giant index. <laughs> We've had the pleasure of like uh, having uh, her as a guest a few times on Discord. We oh, had to yeah. some stuff. And and she, I have to say, like, she's one of the most loveliest people I've ever met. I only met her a few times, but she's like super nice. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You Agreed. nailed it. So many names, man. So many names. It's oh, going to be just... oh, gigantic. Sorry. Oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say like a little shout out to Jonathan and the schoolism team because we were talking about Brave and he's very proud of that with his Scottish, Scottish heritage. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's a great movie. Love that. Yeah, he mentioned before that they did a very good job like representing that into the story. Yeah, well, the team went there and experienced, you know, uh, Scotland and everything for for a while and hung out with the locals and things like that. That's what I've heard. You know, and the, one of the songs, actually, there there was like a story about the song. Yeah. Right? It There's, came from a real singer. Yeah, the, like, they were in a bar and they hear this woman singing. And so... That was the impetus, or even maybe that was even her singing in the movie afterwards because they heard it in a song. Oh, oh sorry, in a bar, I should say. Oh, is there supposed to be another 10 minute thing? Mm -hmm. One, two. We could keep going three, with this four. if you need another. <laughs> Oh, I guess I'm, yeah, let's just keep going for another 10 minutes then. Since there's a lot here. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole sloth of bears. <laughs> you knew I was going to say that. You knew I was going to say that. I, I love how you like, had this moment of silence in between. You, like, there's a whole sloth. I was waiting for it. Nailed it. Yes. <laughs> I like that you tried to make it feel so natural like, <laughs> in, in a conversation. <laughs> uh, there's a question from Dragos. Uh, I often get too excited about drawing lots of things and eventually ended up drawing nothing because I couldn't decide. Does that ever ap happen to you guys? Oh, oh man, <laughs> have you been watching? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. It happens to all of us. Yeah. Don't worry about that. You can always go back. 
this is, you know, practice. I think like one of the biggest practices you could do with not just art, but like, I feel like this is transferable to any profession is just to practice getting more and more control of your emotions, of your mind and expel the stuff that's not going to help you, you know? Like, should I draw this? Should I draw this? How do we stop thinking about that? You know, it's like, that's why meditation is so great because you just keep practicing getting out of certain modes and getting back into another mode. And so when you are very familiar with that and you need to do that, then it's far easier to do that, right? And then you could be like, oh, it doesn't matter if I want to draw a million things. I'm going to do this first and put on the blinders and stop thinking about all that other stuff. That's what I think uh, that person should really go for if they if they would like to break that cycle. Yeah, it's, it's one of the things I learned with writing as well. It's like one of the biggest takeaways I ever had is just start. Like yeah. You can always improve or change to something else if you want to. And like just start and just have fun with it and then see where you take it from there or have a goal or just something very specific oh then i'm sure you probably relate to like like a lot of artists anyways i'm Mm -hmm. i'm assuming a lot of artists i'll just say me for sure there's been so many times where it's like i see myself setting up to draw and i'm taking Mm -hmm. so much time and i'm just kind of taking my time to do that and really i could just dive in i could just Mm. dive in and just start right but i gotta get everything and i used to think like you had to like i used to approach it when i was younger like i want to write the perfect scene or the perfect story or this or that and i'm now more excited to mess up because then i have something to improve or something to investigate or to work on and that's more exciting now than it used to be it used to be like trying to avoid mistakes and now it's about like let's just see what i do wrong and learn from that mm-hmm. and that's exciting like that's way more exciting than, than i've than, and that makes a project fun to do because if you nail it the first time around it's just what's next like, that was boring <laughs> like, mm-hmm. <laughs> the thing that i do is um i just go this thing that i'm doing right now i'm not even going to use any of it uh in the final i'm just working out my ideas or whatever and that's what i'll kind of convince myself of you know and then i could just be okay with doing a a crappy painting a crappy drawing because that's what slows me down is like not being okay with doing crappy drawing right and then i i take my time with it and then in the end it becomes kind of crappy as opposed to just going with it and then that's when all your best stuff tends to come out. So elusive. Yeah, for me, that change of insight came when I started teaching. It wasn't even though that I had nothing to do with writing. It just made me show that as a teacher, you're looking for the mistakes in your, with your students' work. And that's the most exciting part because then you can help them grow. Mm -hmm. And then you realize like, if I approach that myself as a student, then it is way more exciting to do that stuff. Instead of thinking I have to do the perfect job or I have to have the perfect idea or it doesn't have to be at all. are really cute when you get down to the bear cubs the little faces next week is going to be really fun though Film studies, especially for those that want to do anything that's on the screen. You know, 
film studies that's like a necessary kind of thing. And we'll be doing Roger Deakins uh, films. So I won't put what the names, <clears throat> we could all kind of like guess at what the names of uh, the films are, like where they're from. Test everybody's uh, film knowledge. Okay, yeah, that's going to be really fun. Yeah. Is there a movie in particular that you guys really liked from him? Yeah, best movie ever made. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. But Shawshank Redemption, I love that movie. <laughs> that's so. I did that for the uh, title page of the um, of the stream. Then we have some homework to do now. <laughs> for next time it's exciting homework though yeah did we watch Shawshank Redemption? Oh. yeah it's, yeah, it's been did. a long time ago but yes oh I need to refresh you yeah you need to get off of this stream right now and go watch <laughs> Shawshank Redemption it's so good <laughs> One of the best films ever made. That's gotta be the stream next week. Every time we do a certain movie, they're like, you have to leave now. You have to go watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> stream is over. <laughs> okay, a little bit over one minute left. So if you haven't subscribed yet, everybody, make sure that you subscribe. And then if you haven't hit the notification button, make sure that you hit that because then you would be notified. If you miss a stream, you'd be notified and then you can um, get a little reminder to come back and do your sketches for that week. I'm trying to get everybody artistically fit, you know what I mean? Uh, people are already excited for the film studies. Can't Ooh. wait. Yeah. yeah See you then, Dragos. <laughs> and of course, when you have your 90 Mac uh, drawings finished, you can share them with the hashtag 90 Min Art Challenge. Oh, on thank Instagram you. Instagram or Discord. Uh, we have a channel there too. And every week, uh, we like to draw together there as well. So be sure to tune in. Yay, we're done. Congrats, everyone. I hope everybody could bear it. And uh, uh. <laughs> hope you had fun drawing these sloth of uh, bears with us. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we'll see you all next week. Thank you so much to everybody that attended. Tell your friends. Let's all draw together. And thank you to the mods for all of your help. Patricia and Nell, thank, thank you guys you. so much. And uh, thank you so much, Kay. Thank Another you, very inspirational kind of session uh, with the one and only. Chaos there. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day, and we will see you all next time, next week. <laughs>